Hey guys, so today we're talking about drying. Um, I know a lot of people who are not groomers have this, you know, misconception that we use um, dryers to hurt the dog or, or the dog is left under the dryer, can't breathe, dying or all kinds of crap. But I'm, t I'm telling you guys a little bit about um, drying today. We're not gonna go, you know, in full detail, but basically I'm just gonna show you guys how uh, we dry a dog. Um, now there are many types of dryers that groomers use. Um, you know, there's the hand dryer, there's the kennel dryer, there's just like the blow dryer. Um, as groomers, we don't typically recommend a human hair dryer. Um, we don't typically recommend a human hair dryer for, um, you know, drying a dog because of the heat. And not only that, it can burn. Uh, it can burn them. I mean, some groomers does it, but I, I don't do it. I, I don't like the human hair dryer. I know a lot of pet parents, you know, torture their dogs at home with the human dryer. Um, uh, but it's just, it's not something I, I would do. Just don't do it. But it, it's okay if you put it on a cool, um, the cool level instead of the heat level. Um, so we have this dryer here. It's kind of like a fan. Um, it blows like cool air. So if the dog does not like the hand dryer, we will put this like, you know, near the dog. We're not, we're not putting it on their faces like this. We're not putting it, you know, um, to where it's like freaking out the dog. There's different levels to it. Okay. There's one, two, three level. So this is just like blowing soft air. See, it's not a problem to him. If you can't get his face dry, you hold it like this. It will dry his face okay there's num there's a volume two which does the same thing it can dry the body and volume three which is a little bit louder so if you're drying the face you don't want to do that just keep it on one or two but this blows cool air if you don't believe me you can go to home depot and you will see that you you um you can buy it and try it out yourself okay we also have the uh k9 um blower that dryer um this is a hand dryer it has this which is what i'm going to be using today to um take care of my dog um now a lot of parents will be like oh well i don't want my dog to get dry but if we don't dry your dog guess what your dog is going to spend the entire day here and it's also gonna uh, it's also going to end up going home wet because if we don't blow dry the dog there's absolutely no way we can do the haircut all right now um, if you don't want us to dry the dog, like if you're like adamant about not drying the dog, we will pre-shave the dog, um, trying to get the dog to look as nice as we can. And then once we give him a bath, we towel dry the dog and give the dog back to you. Okay. Okay. So typically before I, um, um, do a dog like that, I would pre-shave him. Like he's getting a number four all over. I would pre-shave a dog like that because there's no point washing all this hair when you're going to take it down again. Um, um, but I left it long. I wash him. I wash him twice just to get him really clean. I kept it long so I can show you guys um, how to dry a dog. Um, typically when um, I do a long hair dog like that, if they're staying fluffy, after I wash them, I will brush the hair to make sure all the mat comes off. Um, and then also, you know, just it, not only that, it helps with the length of the hair. I mean, it helps the, the hair look straighter, okay? As you can see, I already, um, you know, pre-brushed the face. Um, there's another dryer that, um, there's a third dryer groomers use, which is called the kennel dryer. Um, it's, uh, it's a master equipment. You can go online, you can go on Pet Edge to check it out or, or Chewy or wherever you want to, you know, shop. It's called a Master Equipment Groomer. It has three um, hooks for you to put on the kennel. Like, um, like for example, I know when you work at PetSmart, they're not, they don't allow, you know, for you to put kennel dryers on certain breed. And I do like their policies for that because it's very strict. Like for example, if you have like a Shih Tzu or, or uh, a dog with a smooshed face, they're, uh, they're not allowed to have the, the, the dryer on them because, you know, that's a hazard. Um, that dryer has three hooks and they do not allow the groomers 
to put um, two hooks at the, on the dryer. If it's a dog that is qualified to get the dryer on him, they'll add one hook if it's a one single kennel. If it's a kennel with two, with two doer, each doer has, a, um, has a, a, a dryer handle on it. So um, we're gonna start drying him so you guys can kind of see and, and, and I'll stop to let you know what you should do and what you shouldn't do when you're drying. So when drying, especially if you have a dog who hates the dryer or who does not like the noise, because um, the, the, the uh, dryer is loud, okay? We're not gonna lie to you about that, it's loud. So this is why when we tell the pet parents it's gonna be um, three, three to four hours, the whole thing is with the drying because most dog does not like the dryer so it takes a little bit longer like there's tricks you have to use to get them to be okay with the dryer like for example holding the dryer for away while you like you know um drying them with a towel or or you know use cotton balls to put in their ears or keep giving them breaks back and forth back and forth because you know what not all dogs like the hair i don't like the hair dryer on my head because to me it, it you know I just don't like it but um if you're using a dryer like that like you know especially i want our clients to know that and i want pet parents to know that like your dog does not like the dryer some dogs absolutely love loves the dryer and lets you do whatever and some dog tolerate it but um the whole misconception about you know dry, drying a dog is like painful it's it's hurting it's it's, it's torturing it's not like if you want to see if i mean if your boomer is comfortable with you just sitting here and take a look that's fine but typically it's not a really good idea for you to sit here while the dog is getting groomed because just like children they will put up a fight and we will not get anything done at all because all they're going to want to do is go to you and sit next to you and whine and cry so i don't normally recommend that but if your boomer has a window like we do you can kind of hide your body and hide yourself so you can kind of peek in the window to see how we're working on your dog or you can visit the youtube channel you can do that too facebook instagram we're on all of them so we're gonna start drying we're gonna put cotton ball in um and his ears so basically if it's you know it's not fitting so i'm gonna split the cotton ball So pretty much it's, the cotton ball is in the ear to help with the noise. It's kind of, it's just like we use, uh, you know, those earplugs. Um, we do the same thing here. Okay, so we're going to start with the hand dryer because like I said, um, I'm just going to try and hand dry him um, all the way for you guys. Um, when you start to dry a dog, uh, whether the dryer is hot, whether the dryer is cool, um, or if it's warm, don't leave it on the skin, okay? Don't leave it on one spot. So you need to dry and go, uh, you know, like up and down, up and down, or side to side, whichever how you want to do it. But just do not leave it on one spot. Now, if let's say, for example, you're one of those people who likes to dry one area um, at once. So you know what? Start here. Just stay in that area or stay in the, uh, uh, whatever area you choose to, but do not leave the dryer on the dog's skin, okay? Now, the hand dryer that I'm using today, which is the K dryer, it has two settings. Um, the one, the, uh, if you want to, if you have a dog that is scared or does not like the noise, you use one uh, setting. Um, instead of using both of them at once, but if the dog is perfectly fine, like, let's say for example, if you're working on a standard poodle with really, really thick hair, then I recommend the two setting because it will dry the hair faster. The, the lower setting takes like forever to dry the dog. So right now I'm using a one setting. You can use a brush. If you're keeping the dog long, you can use a brush, but make sure you're not like brushing really hard to leave mark on the dog's skin. So lightly brush it. It's almost like when your hairstylist is uh, blow drying your hair. Just like that. See, I'm moving from spot to spot. Or if you wanna do this. Okay, just one. Um, so this is called a nozzle. It's, uh, if, if you want your dog to be like, you know, extra fluffy and you want it to divide the hair, 
or some people just like to use the nozzle because it, 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 you, you dry the dog better. I don't like the nozzle on this dog, but I'm gonna uh, use it so I can show you guys how it's used. It's pretty simple. You just put it in, in, in there, tie this up a little bit, okay? So, cause when you turn it on, you don't want it to flick around. Do one setting for me. So this is pretty much it. See, it's splitting the hair. That's what it's doing. So pretty much just like that. And it's not hot. I can put it on my face. I could leave it on my skin. So you, you will see some of your groomers whenever they're drying, they're constantly um, doing this to their face. It's because you know all the hair is flying about and they want to get it off their face, okay? Um, We're gonna go ahead and start drying. another dryer that has um, you know a, a lower lower setting a much lower setting so it's just blowing air uh, now some dogs likes to have their face um, to face uh, to have their faces dry some dog tolerate it uh, tolerate it and then um, some dogs just straight up hate it okay so I'm gonna show you how to do it with this dryer and then um, we're also going to move in, uh, move on to another dryer that's that have a lighter setting. So pretty much, I'm like hiding his face. So to dry to dry the face, pretty much, um, you know, if your dog lets you, you can kind of cover the face, or you can use your um, uh, towel to kind of help out um, of course like I said I have cotton ball in the ear to, to help out with that and I'm using the dryer with the lower setting so you don't have to shove it in the dog's face okay just lightly do it and then he'll let you do it Most dogs, what they do not like about the dryer is um, the noise. I mean, like I said, um, if you have a dog that's, you know, who's giving you a, a difficult time, uh, you could try putting some cotton ball in their ear, which, are, which serves as a, a, you know, a ear plug for them. And it does help a little bit. Uh, so this is what the dog looks like when we're done drying them. It's all nice and fluffy. Of course, like I said from the beginning of the video, um, I, uh, I'm gonna do a short haircut on him. It's summertime here in Florida and that's what the uh, parents like. But um, just talk to your uh, pet parents about having this, this notion that, you know, the dryers are harmful, the dryers are bad, the dryers this. And I know everyone 
you know, who's been to PetSmart, Petco, or a private grooming salon has this whole, you know, thing about, oh my God, they torture my dog with the dryer. They do this, they do that. You know what? If your dog does not like the dryer, we will let him hang out in the kennel, okay? Um, we will let him hang out in the kennel. We will do our best to dry him, but this is what we, why we tell you the, uh, uh, the drop-off service is a three to four hour because your dog might have a lot of things that he does not like for the uh, grooming process and we need to give the dog a break we need to give ourselves a break so do not go you know yelling at your groomers or, or saying oh my dog needs to be out right away if your dog needs to be out right away then you can go ahead find another grooming salon that's able to do that for you but if we tell you no, we can't do it, it's no, we cannot do it. If we tell you no, your dog does not like something, no, your dog does not like it, okay? We, we, we try very, like a lot of different ways to uh, do something on a dog. Like let's say for example, if this dog did not let me dry his face, guess what? I would sit there with him, hold um, this dryer, you know, put it on the table and just kind of play with his face so he could let me, so I can dry the face. So it didn't, you know, it wouldn't stay curly like that. But a lot of people doesn't understand that we need to dry the dog in order to give the dog a nice haircut. You're paying for it. So if you want us to just shave your dog, give it a bath, send it home looking like, you know, a homeless dog, then that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. But it, for example, um, there's a lab video you can see um, and and uh, one of uh, you know in the list of videos that we have on YouTube, it's a lab. So his mom, I mean her mom, does not like her to to get dry. So pretty much we shave her from beginning to end. Um, you know she does get a nice pre-shave, and um, after we shave her, we give her a shower, towel dry her, and mom picks her up. Okay, um, she's good for the dryer. She lets me do it, but mom does not like for her to get dry. So that's an example of someone who you know does not want the dryer to be on their dogs, or who they are maybe they're in a hurry to get home or to get somewhere. But if you bring us a dog that's fluffy like that, if you bring us a dog that's a standard poodle, a Shih Tzu, a Bichon, whatever it is, if the dog has fluffy hair, when it comes to the grooming salon, we need to dry it. Okay, so that's, that, that's all we can say on the subject. I mean, that's all I can say on the subject. That's all any groomer can say on the subject. We need to dry the dog before we put our blades on it. Our equipments are very expensive, so we can't put it through a wet hair. And this is why we pre-shave. This is why we go over the haircut after to make sure it looks good for you. Anyways, that was my take on the, uh, you know, using the dryers at the grooming salon. So feel free to leave comments if you don't agree. Feel free to leave comments. It's your own opinion. But please like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. And also, you know, the reason why we cannot um, use our equipment on a wet dog is that it dolls up the blade. And we, we are not able to get an even cut. It's going to look like crap. So for the people who goes um, swimming in the ocean with their dogs and then um, bring, a, like for example, we have some people who has a big fluffy dog. Let's say for example, someone has a Malibu, okay? They take it to the ocean, let them have all kinds of fun, wet, and then bring it in and then, you know, for like a, a haircut and they're like, oh, he's already, um, he just got his bath. Um, he was swimming in the ocean, so he's perfectly fine. You can just shave him and I'll take him home. That is impossible. We can't do that, okay? That is a recipe for disaster. It's gonna mess up a blade. It's just not a good thing. So guess what your groomer does when you bring them a dog that's wet? They uh, put it on the table, dry it, pre-shave it, do the haircut. Or they dry the dog completely, okay? I mean, sorry. Or they um, wash the dog, uh, you know wet from the ocean we wash the dog put it on the table and then dry it so don't do that don't take your dog to the ocean and bring them in wet if they have long hair and we have to give them a haircut that just takes way way too much time and this is him after his haircut 